Ready? I'm ready. Oh Rolling. Together and it's not even building your brain. Exactly, exactly. And, and so and your, 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 reputation, your reputation is everything. Yeah. So it's just it's just a better way to put everything together is to build a business with the base of integrity. But yeah. it's good good you reformatted your business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I say, it, and, and and to me, what I saw on the landscape was so many social media gurus um, were popping up and giving people one-off tips and how to do this and how to do that, and not executing them properly. Right. So now. Client A will come 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 and say, um, "Can you do all of this for ninety nine dollars?" Because I see um, XX Guru is charging me ninety nine dollars um, right. to, to to do it. They're right? not doing it the right way. <laughs> I mean, when you're you uh, know so what you're doing. So hey guys, we're letting you guys jump in and join us. Um, as you can see, it's conversations are getting more and more relaxed because we're working with more and more people that I actually have respect for and have built great things in the industry. So you know what it is, it's two techies. Uh, we're here to talk to Andre Iceman K. Um, this, the guy was, to me, this was a uh, Hootsuite before Hootsuite was invented and uh, people couldn't even see the vision in. They, most of them are just now catching up. So we're gonna jump into some of the formalities right now. Um, I think where we started off was a great way to make sure we go into this conversation. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So Andre, if you could tell us, when did you fall in love with tech? Ooh. Um, it was a very early age, and, and the, the idea is fall in love with marketing first, right? Um, and I have to be honest, because a lot of people are gonna say, "Hey, I fell into tech when I was two years old, and my com my dad gave me a computer." Right now, right. <laughs> um, for me, it was on fall in love with marketing. Um, that was the the, the 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 game plan, and it just came natural of of marketing. Um, and this was in my early teens. Um, once I, I, I fell in love with marketing and saw the potential of marketing, then for me it was like, how do I push the boundaries of marketing? And that's where technology came. Mm -hmm. I was like, ha, huh, okay. So you use tech to enhance a skill set that you already had. Exactly, and exactly. Tried, yeah. exactly. We've explained that a lot of people with digital grads, like we're tech and innovation. So sometimes you use tech to enhance the innovation. Doesn't mean we just develop software. Exactly, and I think a lot. I think a lot of people get it confused right. when it comes to you, you're an entrepreneur, but do you do tech or you just do regular market or your marketer, right? You can do both, right? right? <laughs> you can right, do absolutely. both and enhance each other. Um, so yeah, so that's and, and that was when we developed that texting platform. Yeah. Um, shit, 12, 30, like fifteen years ago, something like that. Yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> gotcha. So we were talking about this, but I know what you do in tech, but some of the people in the audience that are watching us today may not know what you do. Could you explain exactly what it is that you do with innovation in tech? Yeah, so for, long story short, so for Socially Buzz, from a social media standpoint, what we do is that we help businesses grow using social media and data, right? Okay. Um, so the idea is, yes, the social media part of it is, 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 is very simple, right? Develop the right content, develop the right messaging, but the, 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 the data part of it is what really works, right? So what we do is that we take what we're doing and we analyze it, right? Say, so, okay, great, if we do this and we did and we got this, how can we enhance that 10 times, gotcha. right? Then we look at the data um, and enhance it, right? So what it's, that's taking the data from your entire customer, li um, customer list and um, using the, 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 what is retargeting or using um, any type of, of advertising to reach those people or reach a look like audience of those people, okay. um, then that's what we do, right? So it's beyond just social media. It's, it's really utilizing the social media, and as I said earlier, using tech right. with social media or... So you're um, enhancing the structure of what people would know as Google Analytics to some. Yeah, whether it's Google Analytics, um, Facebook um, uh, Insights. Insights, yeah. Um, but Facebook Insights came out after you had already implemented your own software to actually execute what we're talking about. Yeah. So when, when we and, and, and the funny thing, I will, I will talk about this part of the business and and and, and how tech is not always good. Yeah. Right. To, mm -hmm. to some degree. 
Um, I think I think uh, we definitely want to share a part of it, right? So with Socially Buzz, when we launched Socially Buzz eight years ago, no one was really doing what we we're doing, we're, and started out as a social media agency, right? right? Um, matter of fact, when we launched Socially Buzz, it was supposed to be an influencer network, right? What they're calling influencer right now, we were doing building that eight, eight years, years ago, ago right? um, and the idea was to connect celebrities with brands that wanted to expose their products or their business and so on. Um, but we hired someone to help us build it out. Okay person disappeared with thousands of dollars um, from us. We went through that three or four times with different products. <laughs> oh, the ear card, <laughs> thing, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. Um, so to us, with social media, it was, do I go back to find a job or do I move forward? Right. So the idea is that we, the word pivot, <laughs> um, and we went with all the clients that we worked with back in the days, whether it's in the nightclubs, the, um, the brands, it was like, hey, we want to help you with your social media. This was this new thing. There was no one going up asking people to say, hey, we're going to help you manage your social media. Right. So people were like, okay. Um, so we, we, we built that. We, 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 grew the, we, we grew socially but because it was this new thing. No one was really doing it. But as we grew, my mind is always on what's next. How do right. I use, as I talked about tech, to enhance what we're doing. And one thing we kept on hearing from people was, from our clients was, Hey Andre, you guys do an amazing job, but we already have a marketer in, in house. I don't want to fire them. Do you have something that can help us enhance to, to enhance what you're doing? And that's when we started working on the social media buzz app. Oh, dope. right. All right. Um, we, and, and once again, that the whole who's so that should lead into it. And I, I, if people, if you don't get it at that point, you don't <laughs> have to book them offline. That's when he starts selling his services. <laughs> uh, so breaking out of tech, tell me, craft beer, craft cocktail. I would have, uh, I, I, I would say craft cocktail for now. Okay, and if, have, we, if we got a craft cocktail, what are we drinking? What am I serving you? Uh, I, I'll answer this in two ways, right? Okay. One, one because of the wifey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she, she's a Hennessy drinker. Oh, wow. Right? Okay. Uh, so with her, I, I, I'm big on Hennessy. So anything to get creative with, with a Hennessy cocktail, okay. We would like to try different things that way. The VSOP, you get it? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So, so I, I, I'm not a new Hennessy um, addict of some sort, drinking Hennessy because of her. Uh, but before, when I used to go out, I tell this funny story, which is also, when I used to do the night nightlife partying and um, doing promotion and stuff like that, I never used to drink. And never. stay sober. Right, yeah. stay sober and yeah. do business and stuff right. like that. But every time people see me with no drink in my hand, you know that, that perception of, you're not enjoying the party, You're so not enjoying the party. Trust me, I was a promoter, this, this, we know. This, 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 <laughs> this guy is not about anything, he's right. spending no money. Right. So what I did was we ordered a drink. I ordered I ordered a drink called, um, it was ginger ale and pineapple, and we called it gin Okay. Right? And so every time I have this drink, people would think, they would think I'm drinking, but I'm not really drinking. I'm actually drinking juice. Right? I used to do mine with just straight up cranberry <laughs> juice. I used to do cranberry juice and would just let ice melt a little bit so it discolor uh, like vodka okay, would do. Okay, okay, okay. But same way, you gotta yeah. count your money at the end of the night. So exactly, one thing exactly. I don't wanna be is drunk. And then at the, another point, I'm driving around with anywhere from three to ten thousand dollars in cash. Exactly. I exactly. don't wanna pull over, get pulled over drunk exactly, with that exactly, much cash exactly, on me. Exactly. So so that was that was the strategy and um, so what I do now, matter of fact I had this at my wedding. Uh, the Jennifer concept, but we had added Ciroc. So we had a Jennifer Rock. <laughs> Did you use the pineapple Ciroc? <laughs> yeah. That was there we that go. Sounds you, good. You, know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. That might be the next one, though, but Gin Apple works as a drink, though. That's yeah. a good drink, though. Yeah. yeah. I even thought about bottling bot it. Hey, I don't really different. buy Ciroc, but I might try that. That's for a whole different story. <laughs> All right. So if your business life was based on a movie or a TV show, and we were able to plug into you right now, what would your eyes project on the screen? What would we see? Oh jeez, um, I, I think it'd be a lot of, I wouldn't say drama, but I I, I, I think it'd be a little bit more on a creative side. So what show? Uh, what show? Uh, I'm, I, I watch very limited amount of TV, but hey, let's see. That's the one, that's what, um, if it's limited, that's all we're going to know. From a marketing standpoint, I, I hate to go this way, um, of, of the Don Draper type of guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but maybe a little bit of that. Okay. Um, Don Draper? Yeah. Okay. All right. So what do you feel are one of your biggest challenges or struggles that you're currently dealing with right now with business development? All right. Good question. Right. Um, and just to kind of step back, I've been doing this for eight years. Right. Right. And 
one of the things I've, I've, I've learned over that eight year period of just from social, and that's just social buzz alone, right? Okay. Though not, not to mention the other um, entities and companies we founded and so on, but everything I've learned in my past entrepreneurial life is what brought me to where we are with Socially Buzz, okay. right? So one of the biggest thing that we that I went through, and matter of fact, we, 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 we are cohorts together, uh, when we went through that um, the Goldman Sachs program, as, right. as you did Goldman as well, Sachs, yes. uh, one thing I struggled with two years ago, two, three years ago, was having the right people in place. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how important that was until we went, I went to that program and realized I, it was so important for me that three years ago, I stopped taking on business because I want to focus on our human resources, having the right people in place to help us get to that next level. Gotcha. Um, that year, we lost, our revenue was down about 30 to 40%, mm. right? But it was a sacrifice I had to make. To grow. Uh, to grow. Trim the, the fat to get to the meat. Yeah. The year after that, we increased 100%. Dope. Because we had the right people in place. Um, everything was... You and, made the sacrifices to make sure you were doing the biggest Exactly, bit. and now going forward, will continue to grow um, that route. So human resources, that was one big thing that we, that, that we, that we got fixed. Um, and, and it doesn't matter how much, even though we're, we, we, we've grown successfully, um, we know outside investment, I mean, funding is always a, a, a part of it where, okay, I want to get to that next level. So it seems like sacrifice and funding would be two of your, because some human resources isn't a problem. Yeah. But knowing when to make those sacrifices are your biggest struggle. Exactly, exactly. It is hard to let go of certain things to know when you, to know when you have to cut because you're the boss. There's nobody else to really go talk to. Exactly. And then one of the biggest decisions I had to make was we talked about earlier with the software side of it. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't uh, not complete that story. Is that I invested hundreds of thousand dollars in making getting the software. Um, then I spent a year and a half or two years looking for funding for the software and neglecting my agency the bread and butter of the business so is that a challenge from being ahead of the curve yeah uh, is that a challenge of being ahead of the curve while being black <laughs> or is that a challenge of being ahead of the curve and living in south florida or is it all three things i i, I think it's all three and i, and I tell you why because a lot of people probably i'm probably new to a lot of your viewers are probably seeing me but you guys right. know i've been around for a very long time, right? right, right? right. I, 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 I don't come out as much, right? Because I'm, I'm the guy that's in getting it done. Uh, but I was looking for funding or I was talking about Miami and Tech before Miami everyone and Tech was, was popping. Before yeah. Miami and Tech was popping. I remember in a meeting with one of the guys in that um, sold um, Buddy Media mm -hmm. for almost a billion dollars. Uh, in a meeting in New York with my now wife, um, we were sitting in a meeting in New York and I was like, look, we're in Miami, we're doing this thing. And the first thing he looked at me, I was like, you need to move out of Miami. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because I mean, the thing is, <laughs> and the reason why I bring it up, because it kind of circumvents one of the questions I was going to ask. I know your milestones. I know what you <laughs> accomplished. And so I guess for the viewers, for you to understand, um, Andre was in a position before Hootsuite really made his thing. You had started scheduled posts you had started pulling in data and you were doing it on multiple networks for single clients. Yeah. And I remember when you was doing it, I was like, yo, it's dope. I couldn't afford your services, but I knew what it was worth. Yeah. But the biggest thing wasn't to come and try to talk you down. But what would have made you, if you look at, back at it now and being more so honest, because yeah. it's easier to be honest when it's past. <laughs> Did you not know the numbers? Did you not know how to present your product to get the investors and to get people on board? Or were the angel investors and the people you were meeting in South Florida, could they just not see that far ahead? Um, I don't think South Florida was ready for technology. Because uh, eight years ago, it wasn't really a discussion. It like was a I very said, small group. No one was talking about it. Very small, mm -hmm. very tiny, tiny, small Brandon group. Brandon Dorsey, es Fakiri, es people like that, Manny es Medina. It was very small. Es especially for people of color. Right. Right? Uh, it was a very small niche. And it was, who do I talk to? It's not like I could be like, hey, um, XXX. Can you introduce me to this person? Yeah. There's no, who am I going to call? There was right. no for me to call. So the idea was to look outside. Um, and so looking outside, they were telling you, if you want to make it happen, you need to leave Miami before we put that kind of money into exactly, it. Exactly, exactly. That's and kind I, of discouraging. And, and I didn't want to leave. So, I mean, I, and, and that's how I end up growing a company with no outside investment. Right? Well, at least uh, we're past that part of our life. Because <laughs> <now. laughs> yeah. at least the opportunities are here now. Yes, yes. That's good to know.
Um, I want your genuine response when you hear this. Don't hold back. Um, this is only on YouTube and Facebook, <laughs> all over the world, theoretically, but it's not on a network, so we're not going to get uh, censored. So, two words, your genuine response. Diversity and inclusion. Fuck that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, <laughs> Now, now that we know how you feel about it, in a very short phrase, you have all the resources to fix diversity and inclusion. You get all the money, get all the people you need, because we don't want to name the value. Don't really want to name the people. But um, the thing is, you have to pitch it in four sentences or less to get all those resources. What would be your pitch? To really, for, for, for this to really work, right? It, it comes down to reinvestment okay. of, of um, and, and this, this has been a, a, a strategy that whether it's the Silicon Valley, um, the, the, the Austin and stuff like that have used is if I make it big, right? I just sold my company for half a billion dollars, right? I need to come back and be like, Michael, what do you have working on, right? Hmm. Let me invest in that. Uh, we have to reinvest in ours, in what we're doing, and, and making sure that, and not only, I'm not only investing just in, in, in you guys, but I'm investing in other entrepreneurs as well, right? And so, just for the viewers that might not be following this, he's already done his pitch. <laughs> the pitch was his opening two sentences, which is reinvestment. So now he's just explaining it, which yeah. please continue. Yeah. Um, so now we, we, we look at, great. And I'm, I'm not saying that I'm just gonna be like, hey, this guy in the street is have this idea, I'm gonna invest in it. But look at it, if it makes sense, then you do it. But that's how we're gonna work. Now when I invest in you, and you make it big, you come and invest in 10 more people, like us. So you almost make a pledge and a commitment to do so. Exactly, exactly. You so know what, I have this segment I'm gonna do after this today. It's called Shit That's On My Mind. <laughs> and that's actually one of the topics. Okay. Um, one of the topics is speaking truth to power. Yeah. And you can't expect people to come and fix the problems that you could solve yourself. And in our community, I was having this conversation with one of our associate producers. When do we get to the point where, like when me and you talk, yeah. even though we do similar things, I've never seen you as competition yeah. versus the opportunity for collaboration. Yeah. So it's almost like when we're in our comfort zone, we actually see those people as competition. Yeah. Like, oh, I can't tell, he might take my client. But when we work with other companies, I won't even say race base, <laughs> just other companies, yeah. bigger than us, more powerful than us, we see that as a collaborative. I'm like, they're not gonna collaborate with you. They can, they can destroy you. Yeah. They're literally using you when they don't want to do something or they need to outsource because they're overflowing work. But yet the other person is struggling right aside you, your brother, your friend, your partner, you see him as competition. Why is that competition, but the other person is a collaboration? I, I, I think it's human nature, right? Human, humans are very funny people. I think you have to get to a very certain level in, in life to understand this, right? So just similar to this, right? If, 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 if you post something on Facebook or on Instagram or whatnot and say, hey guys, I just started a new shoe line. Can you support it? No one's gonna ever support that, right? right? Unless you knock on the door a hundred times, right? Michael Jordan, you probably hear this story along all this, this story all the time. A celebrity, if someone re releases a shoe, you'd have no problem standing in line getting that shoe. Right. Right. But so if you release it, they don't even want to talk about it's it. It's human nature, and and, and, and it's really it's, 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 it, it takes a really powerful person to support the the, the 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 former, right? Which is, hey, my friend just released something. Let's support him. Let's get it. and not, and support it more than just. You're my buddy, I'm supporting you, but supporting it because, yo, I really want to support this thing. Because right? you believe in it. Yeah, it's, 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 believe in it. it's too, sympathy too. versus investments. Exactly, 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 right? Just like you used to go out and buy that, that, that new Nike, you're doing it because, oh, I really like this, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it, right? right? So Because you're not even investing in Nike, you're just buying a product and walking away. Exactly. You're exactly. investing into your friend. Yeah, so I, I, like I said, it's, it's human nature, and, and, and where we could crack that mentality of people, I, I, I think we, we, we could really be onto something because- Centuries of psychology to check this <laughs> Okay, so the world is yours. You get to choose one mentor that would invest in you for a year. Time, money, anything you need. Right now. 
right now. Who is it? Damn, can I can I can I merge? Can nope, I... just one. One person. <laughs> <laughs> um and I, I and the reason why I'm gonna say this name is because this is where I'm at in my life right now. Gotcha. And this is where I'm this is my future of what I'm looking right. at. Mm -hmm. Um so that's why I'm saying this is Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. We've heard that name I think twice now. Yeah. Okay. Um there's always a soundtrack to life. If your life not, not your business, not just business, it's life in general. This should be a great song, by the way, for you, uh, <laughs> since you just got married. Uh, <laughs> if your life was a song or even an album, and we were able to plug into you right now, what are we listening to? All right. I'm Jamaican, right? Okay. So, hold on. I, I got to, gotta, it's, it's, it's on my playlist because I listen to this thing all the time. We're going to let him cheat because it's our boy. We normally don't let people go onto their phone. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's on my, I mean, it's on my Spotify Oh, we're going to play it for us. That's even better. <laughs> Maybe we'll use this as the background music for the intro. <laughs> uh, so, it, it, it's, it's, it's very interesting that you asked that question. Um, I'll play it right now. This is a gift to his wife. That's the only reason why we let him get away with this. So, he's going to be able to cut this part out and say he did it for her. Yeah, this, yeah, this yeah. is called the setup. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Um, let's play this one. And this is, the, and she loves Jamaican music as well, okay. right? Now you got to tell us the name of the song. This, this is once again I'm Caribbean. So this is this is called Dream. Dream by an artist called Popcorn. Okay. It's oh, and I, and I, and I explain it in a second as well. So now you got to tell me what he's saying. It's just like you understand the Southern draw. There's certain things that I'm not gonna understand in the crowd isn't either. So, so the idea behind it is dream. It's, it's telling our youth that. Who's the you, artist, by the way? It's called Popcorn. Okay, Popcorn. Okay. Yeah, it's it's whatever you believe in, it could come to reality. It's a dream. Don't 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 be doubtful. Work hard, and your dream will come true. Motivational. Exactly. But in a so Jamaican dance hall way. Is dream for you? The dream of your business or the dream that you got to marry your best friend? Which dream are we talking about right here? I, 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 this I, is called the layup. <laughs> <laughs> to marry my best friend. <laughs> See how he executed that? That could have been a failure. Uh huh. Nothing to do with business. All right. Um, <laughs> no, what's with people business? <laughs> so we're all in the game. And at one point, you either retire, you walk away, or life ends, one or the other. Um, what would you want to define your legacy? <laughs> oh man, I love this question. Uh, once again, when you get to a certain point in life, certain things doesn't, certain things that used to be valuable to you no longer become valuable. Right. Cars, name brand shoes, name brand clothing. You're right, I shop on sale. All right, right I get it. Uh, now, to me, is the empathy of how do I give back? How do I help people? All right? And so socially buzz is my stepping stone to my next initiative which yes. is kids makers lab yes right so i look at kids makers lab as my gift to humanity right um and the idea is developing an initiative that can help one million kids by 2030 um to become makers and global problem solvers right and the idea is that everyone is doing this as far as hey we're gonna build engineers we're gonna build no, the idea is because not everyone. Who, how many jobs are there going to be for freaking engineers, <laughs> right? So, so my goal is with Kids Makers Lab is to develop people that think like an engineer, think like a maker. Twelve years, you would want to develop a million kids. Yes, I just want to make this note. He actually, I'm not. I don't know your financial status. If you're not, a, <laughs> if you're not a millionaire, I know you're close. I know you're getting up there. Verge of a millionaire, could possibly be a millionaire. 12 years, he wants to reach a million kids. Google is a multi-billion dollar company, and their solution for diversity inclusion was Howard West, <laughs> that's only gonna touch 30 kids. Look at the aspects of what it takes to solve a problem. 30 kids, 30 college students that are actually talented and skilled and able-bodied, a billion dollar company, 30. I, I, and you're gonna look at certain things just to kind of jump off. I'm sorry, I had to do that. Of, of, of what you just said is that 
there's two different between whether it's me and Google or anyone like me that wants to make a huge difference. It's the difference between actually caring versus doing something for a publicity stunt. Exactly, right? So when you, you care, you, your you, dreams are bigger. You're, you're doing it because you're pressured into doing it. Right. And you have to do it because you want to make a statement. Which to or, me, that's what the numbers reflect. 30 exactly. is a good enough number. Exactly. Like how, We might hire how, three. How, how can you come to the table with billions. all these billions and say, hey, we have this awesome idea that's going to help 30 people. Whether that's a year, whether that's two years, whether that's... How do you say, oh my God, that's the most exciting idea I've ever had in my life. <laughs> like, how do you walk away You know what? With that. The dude in the hood giving away <laughs> turkeys couldn't say he was giving away 30 turkeys and get respect. <laughs> exactly. Even if you came to the projects, you would need to show up with at least 250 turkeys. Any number less than that <laughs> wouldn't even look good in the newspaper. Uh -huh. If the dope boy came to the street and came to the corner and said, I got 30 turkeys, they'd be like, 30? Uh -huh. You showed up with 30? That's it? Mm -hmm. Man, that's a good barbecue. That ain't, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's yeah. one of them days. But, All right. But yeah. So I'll put you in the hot seat. Um, before we close out, is there any question or random thought that you would like to ask me that I have to answer on camera? Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah we, we like to reverse the tables. Okay. Good, good, good. Um, my thoughts. Oh. So this was two years ago. Okay. A few years ago, you said you, 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 you said something, right? Mm -hmm. That I will never forget. We had a conversation. I think we were talking about how do we get kids, right? Young kids, teenager, teenagers, oh, interested in technology, interested in uh, not being an athlete or not being a, a uh, rapper of some sort. And you was like, hey, we need to pull up. Um, in, in those schoolyard in Lamborghinis. <laughs> right. um, how do you feel now about that, that statement you made? And, 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 and have your thoughts changed? Um, hmm. Or are we in a better position now to, to say, okay, maybe that's not the, the scenario anymore? No. My thoughts are even more intensified on that. Um, reason being, social media is ruining the... Social media is ruining the conversation even more. So they see the fast life even more than they used to. So now you see the Instagram models making hundreds of thousand dollars, popping bottles and everything. So I can't change what they see. But if I can show them that you can still have a lifestyle like that and make this money, it's almost like getting somebody into the NBA. I can't teach you wealth management while you're still broke. True. You still, you at least got to get the money. Yeah. When you get the money, then it's my you have to act fast and be like, all right, look, that was just for show. You don't need 13 cars. But I still am only going, baby, you can explain numbers. You can't explain wealth to a man that's broke. And you can't tell a man that's broke money is the root of all evil when he doesn't have money in the first place. So how can I tell a kid you don't want to go, that you want to go this direction? I'm like, it's worth a million dollars. They don't really know what a million dollars looks like. But if I pull up in a Lamborghini, they translate that to a million dollars. I still think it's the number one motivator. And it doesn't need to just be tech people. It needs to be engineers, it needs to be everybody. So that's what it's gonna be. So okay, if you awesome. can. Um, oh, 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 I, I always thought about that. I was like, I always think about what, what your mindset was I still right do now. the Jordan concept. I still <laughs> talk to people about it, but uh, may not be, it has to be something visual. They still have to mm. see it. Uh, all the way down to the point where I've told people to promote tech diversity, I want my flyers to start looking like club flyers again. <laughs> um, I want to bring down Plies. I want to bring down Nas. Plies is a marketing genius. Man, if you think a, about it, Plies is doing what you're doing and he's killing it. He's a funny singer. Hashtags, <laughs> his dances, racks up to my ear, all the stuff. Getting people he's to, a to, marketing to, to genius. Engage with him, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I want to do that. So my goal is to have flies down here to talk about marketing. There we go. All right. Um, so if you can tell us, the, tell the people how they can reach you on social media and everything like that. Uh, my life personally is is private. Huh? <laughs> the Boom. Fun, <laughs> for the business. For, 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 funny coming from the social media guy. <laughs> uh, but the business socially buzz. S O C I A L L Y B U Z Z everywhere. Um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Doesn't matter where you are. That's what it is. Uh, but more importantly, forget about socially buzz. Follow Kids Maker Lab. 
Uh, matter of fact, we just launched the social media initiatives um, on Sunday. Dope. Uh, kids, K I D S Maker Labs. You guys know the spell, right? All right. Um, we'll put it on the screen for you too. So, uh, an engaging interview. Really appreciate your time. Uh, thank you for coming out. So, in true form of digital grass, we always like to close things out with one final word. We go around the table. So, if you could just close us out with one single word, not a phrase, not a statement, not a sentence. Just one word to close us out. Fate. All right. Hey, guys, this has been Digital Grass, Two Techies with Andre K. Want a very intriguing interview. We appreciate your support. Catch us on Facebook Live, but also catch us on our YouTube channel, Digital Grass Innovation and Technology.